born and bred up in the Mallee uh, at Robinvale on the Murray River. And uh, Dad was a farmer. We lived about 11 miles out of town. So <clears throat> uh, my first competitive football didn't really start, didn't start until I was 15. Dad had the philosophy that uh, if you start early, you finish early. Um, and I guess coupled with the fact that we lived so far out of town, um, he, he was involved in the football club himself, as were my brothers. And so uh, we didn't get the opportunity to play uh, competitive football until uh, we were 15. Uh, you'll hear me use the pronoun we. Uh, I have a twin brother, Laurie, and uh, we came in a package pretty much uh, right through until, well, past our Camberwell days. So um, we played for uh, Robin Vale in the under 18s in the St. Razia competition. Uh, terrific football, uh, very enjoyable. Um, our coach at the time was Arthur Edwards, who'd played in the 56th grand final or premiership team for Footscray. And uh, so we only had one year there before we went to boarding school. We went to St. Vincent's in Bendigo. Uh, St. Vincent's had a team in the, uh, the local under 18 competition, as well as effectively a school team playing other colleges. So there was a lot of football to be played there. Um, we were there for two years. Uh, the second year there, I didn't play much. I had an ankle injury and probably only played two or three games. From there, uh, we went, uh, we came to Melbourne to study. We, uh, we, we studied engineering at Melbourne Uni. Richmond invited us to come and play in the under 19s. Uh, we had, a, a, I guess, a long connection with Richmond. Dad had played at Richmond in the 1940s. And our eldest brother, Pat, uh, played in 1968. He had one season there. He played one senior game. So we'd grown up barracking for Richmond and so we were, we were pretty keen to go and play there. We played in the under-19s. Uh, we won, the coach, uh, Don, was Don Davenport. Uh, we won a flag uh, that year, 75. Laurie played in the grand final. I didn't play. I, I think it's fair to say that uh, university life and uh, playing at that level of football really didn't fit too well together. Um, at the end of that season, or at the end of that year rather, um, we went home for the harvest. And uh, when we came back, I, you know, we, we really weren't given the opportunity to go back to Richmond, uh, understandably. Michael Bowden had been the coach of Robin Vale uh, in 72, around about, certainly 72, and was a very close family friend. And so Michael invited us to Camberwell, and uh, that's how the two of us ended up playing uh, at Camberwell 1976 it was our first year. Um, we, I think we, we probably both suffered a little bit, well, neither of us were as fit as we should be, well, should have been, particularly early in the year because we never had a pre-season really. Um, at the end of each university year, we would go home for the harvest. So we were committed up there pretty much from uh, until the end of February. Uh, there wasn't much pre-season training done. Um, with the Mallee climate, there was a fair bit of uh, refreshment taken. So we, I think it's fair to say we didn't turn up uh, as fit as we could have or should have. Um, and that impacted on our early season form particularly. Uh, in 76, my first game was at Morty, uh, was against Morty Alec rather, in the reserves. Um, I was in the first the next week and then I played most of that year in the first. I had a couple of injuries, missed a few games, but uh, played most of that year. I had a good year. Um, I won the best first year player. Uh, 77 was a mixed year. Um, I think probably in and out. Laurie was uh, much more consistently in the seniors in that year than I was. I had some injuries. I broke a hand running into the fence at the Camberwell Sports Field, Sports Ground. Uh, always seemed to have some soft tissue problems. Uh, 78 uh, was pretty much the same. Um, at the end of the year, I was uh, fortunate 
to play in the grand final, but uh, I think I spent more time in the reserves that year than first, if my memory serves me correctly. So from there, uh, I left Camberwell at the beginning of 79 uh, and went to Port Melbourne. I had two seasons at Port Melbourne, uh, both very enjoyable seasons. I enjoyed my time there. Uh, the second year, the first year I played in the 70, in a preliminary final at the Junction Oval. Uh, the second year I missed almost all of the year. I had a, an incident at Frankston where um, I suffered an eye injury uh, and missed most of that year. Um, I think I played the last three, year, uh, three games, if I remember, um, and played in the reserves grand final, premiership side. That was the first premiership I'd played in, other than at school. Uh, from there, I was offered a job in Sydney. I'd graduated at that point. Uh, I was offered a job in Sydney and uh, Marguerite and I were married in 81. And um, so from, I then played in Sydney with North Shore, uh, 81 to 86. Uh, I, that was very, very enjoyable football playing uh, in Sydney, um, partly because uh, the football itself was a reasonable standard, particularly the top sides. North Shore was a good side. Um, uh, I became the captain of the club um, after a time and then uh, Barry Breen came to coach us. Uh, we won the flag, we played, we were runners up in 84. Uh, we won the flag in 85 and I had a good year that year. I won the best and fairest and we were runners up again in 86 uh, when I was the captain. So we, uh, at the beginning of 87, um, I intended playing again, uh, but uh, prior to one of the uh, practice matches, um, Marguerite and our two, at that stage we'd had two girls, two, two girls, um, Maddie was about oh, 18 months, and oh no, she must have been two and a half and Grace was six months. I left to play this practice game, uh, all three of them were very sick in bed, and it occurred to me on the way to the game that... Uh, my priorities might be wrong. So I played that match and that was the last match I played. I was 30 years old. I decided that um, I needed to be spending more time with my family. And uh, so that was the last game I played. But as luck would have it, uh, or bad luck, whichever way you look at it, um, the club uh, dismissed the coach after three or four games and asked me if I would coach the club. So I ended up coaching North Shore in 1987. And at the end of that year, Margie and I came back to Melbourne. Uh, and that was, that was the end of my career. I think uh, other people might view me as a reasonably skillful player. Uh, I was uh, a good kick on both sides of the body and a good handball exponent on both sides of the body. Um, I think uh, I'd be considered as a, a team man. Uh, I also I think I was considered as someone who had a good understanding of the game, um, being able to read the game um, and particularly bringing other players into the game. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Michael Bowden was the coach at Camberwell uh, and encouraged Laurie and I to, to join the club. Uh, we'd already had a lot of contact with Michael. Uh, we'd already seen, well, as juniors anyway, we'd seen Michael's um, approach uh, to football in Robinvale. Um, I certainly liked the way that he coached. Uh, we also knew that he was a very, very fine man and uh, so we were happy and our father was happy that we were joining a club um, with such strong coaching foundations. Um, he, in many respects, was ahead of his time. He, uh, he was a, a great exponent of the hand pass, uh, partly because he was a lousy kick himself. I think he wouldn't feel bad towards my saying that. Uh, so he instituted uh, some 
very forward thinking play in my view and uh, I know he was very well regarded by all the players at Camberwell and uh, he was a very fine coach and as I said a very very fine man. Michael left after our first year and uh, Ray Smith came to the club. Now Ray had come from Essendon, uh, Melbourne before that and Ray had before that uh, come from Queensland and he was a, a, a code hopper, let's say. Um, I enjoyed playing under Ray. I, th I think Ray was definitely ahead of his time. Um, he was very heavily into the thinking side of football. Um, he encouraged uh, techniques which now are considered to be normal, uh, visualisation techniques, uh, uh, hypnosis. Now when this first started uh, I can still recall the first night we did it we were lying on the floor in the change rooms at Camberwell and I think it's fair to say that uh, some of us thought it was a bit of a joke. Um, I can recall that uh, Billy Harrop who'd come across from Richmond who was a fine player himself, Bill certainly struggled with it. He uh, started snoring after a few minutes and uh, you know, it made it difficult for the rest of us to enjoy it. But I think Ray, the message Ray was giving was that uh, we needed to look after ourselves, not only physically, but also mentally. And um, I had a very high regard for his coaching ability. Uh, I also had a very high regard for Ray as a gentleman. He was a, a very uh, fine man. Um, and from that point of view, I couldn't speak highly enough of him. I said earlier that uh, I'd been in and out of the firsts uh, during 1978. Uh, I don't have any great memories of the season itself, um, other than the fact that both sides were in the finals, the first and the reserves. Uh, Graham Phillips was the coach of the reserves. and. The reserves was a good, we had a good side. Um, and uh, if I recall, we'd won the second semi-final and I'd had a good game. I think that's right. Certainly I was playing well in the seconds. And uh, uh, the, the grand final was to be played at Northcote on the Saturday, it was against Oakley. And I think the Friday night or the Thursday night, I'm pretty sure it was a Friday night. Uh, I was living in Carlton in a share house with some other blokes. And uh, I'd taken some clothes down in the laundry, which was about oh, probably, I don't know, 800 metres down Ligon Street. And uh, I was there minding my own business. And next thing, one of my share mates came running through the door, totally out of breath, to say that, uh, and I think it was Russell Withers, might have been Russell or Gordon Duff, uh, was on the phone. This was in the days before mobile phones, of course. The only means of communication was either smoke signals or the house phone. So <clears throat> I assumed that something was uh, was going on, so clearly. So I ran back to the house, picked up the phone, and uh, I was told that uh, Ken Innes had an injury. Uh, he hadn't come up. Uh, Ken was a very, very good player. He was actually a Mildura boy. And uh, Ken couldn't play, and that I was to take his position in the first. So. Uh, I was very lucky to get a game in the first to begin with. I assumed at that point that I'd be uh, on the interchange bench, but in fact, when I turned up at the team meeting, uh, I was told that I was going straight into the side to play in the centre. Um, Frankston Centerman was a bloke called Robert Mace, who was a very good player. I, he went on to play uh, for St Kilda, if I recall. Um, I think his father was the coach, Brian, if I recall. Anyway, um, the Sunday, uh, we obviously went through the pre-match routine and so on and so forth. Uh, there was a huge crowd. It was at Turak Park, a very big crowd. Um, extremely windy day. And uh, we ran onto the ground. I think we were first on. Um, as Frankston came on, uh, the two sides ended up very close to each other. And next thing... If I recall, they targeted Phil Nielsen, our big ruckman. Phil was a, a gentle giant. And they targeted Phil. Um, that's my memory of it. And uh, so Amale ensued 
before the match. Uh, the match itself was a pretty tough match. There were a lot of uh, there were some skirmishes, particularly early in the match. Um, it was a match that uh, the two sides were quite evenly matched. Uh, I think it's fair to say we didn't take our opportunities when they presented themselves. We, particularly in the third quarter, we had a lot of scoring opportunities. Um, we ended up going down by 14 points. Uh, I played the whole game on, on Robert Mace, or at least I was scheduled to play the whole game on Robert Mace. Uh, through uh, an intervention by John Hook, quite early in the game, uh, Robert really didn't have a good game. Um, in fact, he went off in the last quarter, if I recall. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, I played a good game. I was in the best players. I was, I was named in the best players. Uh, I think my emotions after the, the, the game may have been a little bit different to uh, some of the other um, players. There were players in the team who had been at Camberwell for some time. This was their first opportunity at a grand final. You know, I was 21 at the time. And uh, after the game, there was a lot of emotion in the rooms um, and a lot of disappointment. But strangely enough, uh, I think probably because I hadn't, intent I hadn't anticipated being there in the first place and because I felt that I'd acquitted myself well at that level, uh, I didn't suffer from any great disappointment. I think I took the attitude of saying, well, OK, it's a game. Um, would have been nice to win, but we lost and um, let's move on. One particularly fine player was uh, Ron Story. Ron was, a, well, he was a country boy, uh, a centre-half forward, very smooth mover. I had a lot of time for Ron, both on and off the field. Uh, and subsequent to that, or the, the, the other players that I recall were players who um, then played on in 77 and 78. Uh, I think of all the players that, if, if I think about both ends of the field, um, three players stand out, uh, backline players, uh, Greg Spittle, Greg was a, a fantastic player, very dependable, uh, terrific mark, uh, very nice kick, tough uh, and extremely consistent, just played well week in, week out. Uh, Ross Wright at centre half back. Ross was probably, well, if he wasn't the best player that I saw there, he was very close to it, tough. Uh, very strong mark, good kick, a dashing player. I think uh, there wouldn't have been too many forwards who would have been happy to play on Ross. Uh, third defender, well actually there's four now that I think about it. The, the third one I mentioned is Colin Judd. Uh, Colin was just a fantastic player uh, at this level. Tough as nails, uh, very, very good reader of the play. Um, a good kick, an ungainly kick, if you like, um, and probably kicked within his uh, um, level of competence. By that, I mean he never tried to overkick, so he was a good user of the ball. Very, very strong team man. Uh, fourth defender I'll mention is, <coughs> pardon me, is uh, Bill Hazlitt. Bill played at fullback, and uh, beautiful kick, strong uh, in the air. Uh, the common thing amongst all those four men were that they also very fine men off the field, very enjoyable blokes to be with. Uh, further up the field, uh, the team was very well served by John Hook. John was a fantastic player. I think it's fair, I don't think John would be upset with me if I said that he wasn't the most polished player going around, uh, but what he lacked in polish he more than made up for in the way he played the game, his endeavour, his aggression. Uh, he. I think was the vice captain, if I recall, under Ray. Um, of all the players, though, that I remember, uh, I think Gary Hammond would probably be the most valuable to the club. Um, Gary was an absolute match winner. Uh, he could take marks from any position. Uh, he was a very good, accurate kick. Uh, but of, of all the players at the club, 
uh, he was the one that people came to watch. And even now, if I mention to somebody that I played with Camberwell, more often than not, he's the player that's remembered. And of course, coming from Robinvale, uh, you know, I don't recall playing a wet game. Certainly when we were young, uh, we used to play at two o'clock in the afternoon at the opposite ground of the seniors. Uh, and dry, hard, firm football grounds. Uh, playing, <clears throat> pardon me, playing at boarding school is different. Some, uh, some frost there and some water. Uh, and the same playing in Camberwell. Uh, I used to hate playing in the cold. I used to hate training in the cold. Um, and one particular day I, I can remember clearly, and this um, uh, reminds me of two things really. The first one was that uh, we were playing Oakley. I was playing in the seconds and uh, we were playing Oakley at Oakley. Uh, absolutely freezing cold day. I couldn't tell you how cold it was, but uh, with the wind chill, it was just, it was wet. Uh, and uh, I, can, I was playing at ten half back and uh, we were giving them a bit of a hiding so <clears throat> the, the whole lot of us in the back line were just, uh, we were absolutely frozen and uh, we, John Dobson was the captain of the reserves, John was a very very good bloke and a good player uh, and John's father Jack was the team manager and uh, so Jack obviously knew that some of us younger blokes were struggling um, and at three quarter time, uh, when we went into the team huddle, uh, Jack produced a bottle of sherry. Now, you know, even at that point, uh, certainly during the game, uh, drinking alcohol, we, we were drinking plenty of it after the game, but uh, this was the very first, and I think in, in memory now, it's the only time that I've ever had the opportunity to drink alcohol during the game. Uh, I can tell you that it warmed, I can still remember now the feeling uh, after taking that sherry, the warmth spread uh, right through my body. Uh, I don't think it lasted all that long, but I remember too thinking at the time that, um, albeit in reserve grade, we were playing for a professional club, and it was just gratifying that somebody had the common sense to bring us some sherry during the match. You've given your heart to get here, and your soul to get here. Right. You can take them boots and all, oh, but it's sure gonna take a fight when you spend all week getting to your peak. You're gonna have your say. You bet. On Sunday, it's the real fight. It's Sunday, you're gonna make your play for the BFA. Sunday for the BFA It's Sunday